So Donald Trump recently made some controversial statements about uh, the Israel-Hamas war and Israel and Iran and different things like that. So I wanted to check it out and uh, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments below. The book goes through not just the presidency, the campaign, All right, your family, this is, and your life. This is just him talking about the his, his book. Let's just skip ahead. All right. Many I don't know. Yeah. Uh, not much of one. So it's possible. I, I hated that he got us into the Middle East. I just yeah. hated it. We spent $9 trillion, blew the hell out of the place, and we left. There's never anything, you know, in the old days, to the victor belong the spoils. I used to say, but I was a civilian, so who's going to listen? But I'd say, don't go into Iraq. Don't do it. But if you are, keep the oil. So Iraq has hundreds of billions of dollars worth of oil right now. We spent a fortune with Saddam Hussein and all of the things we did. Should have never gone in. We decapitated the enemy of Iran. Now Iran essentially, it's like a subsidiary of Iran, but they have hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, four years ago, Iran had no money. They had no money for any of these terrorist organizations. So they had no money so they could attack Israel. Now they have a lot of money. Iran has almost $300 billion. They've got Iraq that has almost $300 billion. It's a lot of money. And they made it in three and a half years. Iran made all this money in three and a half years. People couldn't buy oil from them. They weren't allowed by me. And I'm not looking to be enemies with Iran. I, I'd love to get along with them. Great. But they can't have a nuclear weapon. Just can't let them have a nuclear weapon. I'll say this. If they do have a nuclear weapon, Israel is gone. It'll be gone. Israel is under tremendous pressure right now. I mean, I want to just cut in there. Israel's not going to be gone because God is with us. Plus, we have our own nukes, but it's definitely not a good look. It's amazing. If you go back 15 years or even less, the strongest lobby in that sense in the United States was Israel. You couldn't say a thing about Israel Christian or Jew, you couldn't say anything about today. It's like under siege. You look at AOC plus three, you look at these people, the way they talk about it. And then you see Schumer, who's become a Palestinian, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, he's actually become like a Hamas agent. Schumer, how did that happen? Let me, but you let me see ask it, you about that. You see the outbreak of anti-Semitism in our streets. Yep. That wasn't happening when you were president, but... It didn't happen when I was know, president. But you signed an executive order. Going back to what he said before, listen to what he says. He says Schumer is a Palestinian, meaning he's calling Palestinians... Uh, calling someone Palestinian is an insult. So that just shows how pro-Israel he is in the sense that him calling Schumer a Palestinian is something negative and therefore you know he totally backs Israel completely he's not interested in th you know helping the Palestinians helping them establish their terror state uh like Kamala Harris is extending the civil rights act to cover Jewish students sure. and their free speech which Jew Jewish students are using now to defend themselves in these Ivy League colleges you see what's going on on the streets do you think this administration you know they give a speech here and there uh, do you think they've done enough to fight this? Because colleges are opening now, and they're saying it's going to happen again, and it's going to get worse, and people are running for their lives, and they're hiding, and so forth. When you see that, what do you think? Well, it's getting worse. I just see Cornell is, is a hotbed right now. Today, all of the what's happening up there. So right now, it's a little bit early, but as colleges are starting to open, Cornell was the occasion. It looks like it's worse than ever. And they don't respect this administration. It's very simple. You know, the power that you have with all of the endowments and everything else, the big tax breaks that they get, you have tremendous powers. But the heads of these schools seem like either they're weak and pathetic or they're sort of Marxists themselves, fascist Marxists. Uh, one of the uh, people, one of the professors was on from Cornell today, and he was talking about how the head people at the school are almost encouraging the students to destroy the place. It was actually an amazing statement. You'd think, you know, I could see them cowering in a corner, but I can't see that they're actually 
uh, helping it. And it's shocking when you look at Colombia from last year, but it looks like it's going to get very bad, actually. Yeah, it's just getting worse. I mean, anyone that deludes themselves into thinking that this war is going to end it or, you know, Trump Trump getting into president will will definitely help it. But, you know, the idea that these students, you can just twist their ideology in a minute. At the end of the day, they hate the West. They hate their country. So they hate the ideology. They hate everything. So they're totally brainwashed. There needs to be a complete de-radicalization system in America, re-education um, and reteaching of, you know, what the West is, what America stands for. It looks like it's going to get very bad. It's a little bit early yet. The season's just beginning schools are starting to open up they haven't most of them haven't opened yet but the ones that have it's nasty it's nasty and the government does nothing about it would you consider federal funds that go into these schools yeah you have tremendous power over those schools it seems to me we we, we blackmail institutions all the time with federal funds the democrats do too but not here they just seem to have wide berth to go for it well also speech i mean you're not allowed to, if, if you're Jewish and talking about a positive Jewish event, or whoever you may be, or if you're conservative even, you can't, they won't let you speak. So I wrote out an order, a very strong order, and everybody went and spoke. But that doesn't mean they love it. I, we put a big order that they have to pay massive penalties if they don't let conservatives speak. Mm -hmm. We did a lot for Jewish people because we were able to, you know, we were able to turn that tide, but now it's turning back, and Biden does nothing. How a Jewish person can vote for a Democrat, but specifically somebody like Kamala? She wouldn't even meet with Bibi when he was... Look, he came over. He's the prime minister of Israel. He's. In I, want, I want to go through 10 reasons why Jews should vote for Trump. Number one, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem. Number two, he, he you know, he recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Number three, his daughter is Jewish. Number four, his son-in-law is Jared Kushner, who's incredibly pro-Israel. Number five, his last ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, um, was incredible and is an incredibly strong Jew. Number six, he has an incredible relationship now with Bibi Netanyahu. Uh, number seven, he has basically repeatedly said that he will deport Hamas, pro-Hamas protesters, um, off of campuses. Number eight, he is incredibly strong with Iran. Number nine, there were no new wars under Donald Trump. And number 10, um, he has tons of Jewish billionaire friends like Miriam Adelson, who I wouldn't say pay him off, but definitely he owes them a favor as she gave him about $100 million. So he has a big affinity for Jewish people. The point is, I can list 10 reasons off the top of my head. I didn't look at any notes. I didn't look at anything like that. And I guarantee you for Jews that are voting Democrat, for them to try to find 10 reasons to vote for Biden or Kamala in terms of J the Jewish perspective and how they're going to help Jewish people, they would be hard pressed because even Kamala's, you know, stepdaughter who, you know, is for her father is Jewish. She's, uh, fundraising money for Palestinians in UNRWA and, you know, these terrorist organizations. In a war, we're heavily invested in that war. People are dying. October 7th was a horrific day, just horrific. And now you see people that are picketing. They're saying no such thing ever happened. You know, they did that with the Holocaust, too. They said there was no Holocaust. But this one was right next to us because we saw it. We saw it. You saw it. Everybody saw it. They saw it. I, I don't imagine they they aren't thinking straight. They must know it happened, but they are, I, I think you know they're interviewing people like that are rioting. What about October seventh? It never happened. Now either they're conning us or they really believe it never happened, and that's maybe worse. But I will say though that there are people on the right also that are saying such things. Tucker Carlson, Candace Owens. So it's not only a left problem. What's happened is uh, amazing. What's happened to our country is amazing. We had a country four years ago, we were respected as a country. We're not respected anymore. So many bad decisions. The worst uh, in terms of prestige was Afghanistan. It was handled so badly. I'm convinced Putin would have never gone in if I were president. But 
even with Biden as president, if he didn't do the Afghan and not getting out, I was getting out, I would have been out faster than him. I'm the one that prepared to get out, but I would have kept Bagram, the big Air Force base, which is one hour from where. Uh, enough of that. I think anyone that's normal, pro Israel, Jewish, just really just normal, will vote for Trump in this election. And I think it's going to be a massive Trump victory. Anything that they're saying in the polls, I mean, you should still go out and vote, obviously, but I don't believe that the polls are showing accurate numbers. Um, and I think that Trump is going to destroy her in the debate in a couple of days. And it's going to be a victory. It has to be a victory. Uh, for more, subscribe to the channel, Jewish and Censor. If you want to help us make more of these videos and support us, um, support our, I guess, I don't know about fighting anti-Semitism, but um, support our movement, support our message, go to buymecoffee.com slash Jewish Uncensored.